So many of you guys may be looking at this war and saying, wow, we are outnumbered literally two to one, like literally two to one they have. Um, and that may be a little scary to you. And I'm going to tell you right now, this war is a war that we are going to win. Uh, if, we, if we're going to win really big, that remains to be seen, but we can win this very easily and I will show you how to do it. We have a battle that is about to start here that the numbers are not in our favor. Uh, and very well, we may lose this battle. But if we lose this battle, that does not mean that we have lost the war. A lot of people give up too easily. I'm going to show you how to avoid giving up when you don't need to. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and welcome back to uh, Learning U4 with the Ottomans here. I hope that you guys have been enjoying up to this point. And if you are, please do leave a like on the video and, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys have learned and uh, what you hope to learn in today's episode because... I really do hope that uh, you know, you're able to take away a little bit from this campaign because that is the whole point of it. But so what we're gonna do here is he's attacking us. He will be here on the fifth and uh, we can reinforce on the 12th. So I'm not gonna send all my men in because you don't want to all of your men in at the same time because what that does is that will enable them to overstack and you'll have uh, infantry in the back line, which you do not want. So then you wait a couple of days and you send in a couple more men. So you see they'll be there three days later. So, um, you don't want to lose prestige while in a war because the, the the morale of armies is quite useful. Matter of fact, I'm going to pay for a level 2 advisor for the morale. This extra morale is going to help us out in this battle. Uh, I'm going to go with the National Unrest. So, they are reinforcing very quickly, but you can see here, we're going to lose. There's nothing I can do about it. We are shattering. Um, they are taking very heavy losses, but so are we. So, what we're going to do is... Get out while the getting's good, and we're going to flee. Sadly, our boys are, half of them are going to flee all the way back to Constantinople. That is okay. So we, this fort is already scorched. It's going to take them quite a long time to march in, so they shouldn't be able to make anything, any major gains in the meantime. So what we're going to also do is you want to scorch a couple of extra provinces to make sure that they're not able to uh, do any funny business. So if they want us to come in and stack 30,000 men on one province, that's fine with me because they're going to be taking a ton of attrition in that province. Look at this. 2% attrition. 2% of that 30,000 stack is going to die in this monthly tick. Look at that. Boom. Just like that. Easy enough. They've lost 20. They, so they have double my manpower. They've also lost double my manpower. So they have zero manpower and I have 22,000. And uh, also something you have to consider is uh, we have 14 army professionalism and you can slacken army standards or slacken recruiting standards for five. So if uh, you need to, and, and I avoid doing this at all costs, unless you need to, because I like stacking professionalism. But uh, so if you take a look at that, we can slack in. If we recruit one general and we get an extra professionalism, you can slack in it three times. So we're sitting here with another 27,000 roughly in the bank on top of this. So we're good. Um, so if we take a look at their army quality comparison, you can see they have tradition or professionalism of 12, so they can do it twice as well. And they probably will. The AI does do that. So. If uh, you're watching, you're going to see they're probably going to end up getting a little bit of manpower here in the coming months. Re improve my relations with AQ. We should probably do that. Base manpower in Sophia to get Dimmy and manpower. You know. I don't know. The Umero would be a good one as well. I don't need them to have loyalty, though. Uh, it does help with the manpower recovery, but let's go with the Dimmy. And Sophia, we will... Switch this one over to local dev cost. Um, we do not have prosperity here, sadly. But um, you can see here, two clicks, boom, boom. And then you unpause, and there you go. Get a little bit of manpower here. So we are eight years ahead of time on Miltech. So it's a good example of a time that would be smart to do some devving. So since I turned on the edict over here, look for a province that's good to dev, like this one right here. And you can see autonomy is low enough. We'd like for it to be a little bit lower, but... Um, it's fine. We need to get more crown land. That way we can start really letting it tick down. Being at peace is useful, but while we're at war, it's going to continue to tick up just a little bit. But uh, what you want to do here is you want to click this button here because each time you click this, you're going to be gaining. You're spending a little bit of mana to invest into that province, right? That's the idea at least. So click that button here. Well, click this one here. Do that because that will bring it down the dev. Click that one there, you know, and, and that's how you really want to do that. And then over here, this this provinces, you want to be looking at simple terrain. You want farmlands and grasslands. Those are the ones you want to be devving. Uh, generally, you want to avoid anything in your capital state unless you're devving up institution because those provinces are very useful for that. So same thing here. Click that a couple times. 
Same thing here. Do that a couple times. Click that. Click. Um... Oh, right. Yep. Okay. Very good. Click this one more time. Click that one more time. Let's uh, click this a couple times as well and get rid of that. So there you go. We just spent a bunch of mill mana and now we have plenty more. And you can take a look if you have your manpower map mode. Look at that. These provinces are now competitive with manpower. These provinces are giving us this much manpower per year. So you can see we were gaining, what, 390? So we're gaining now an additional roughly 20. So pretty good. So we need to get these guys grouped up here. This fort here has 40 day siege ticks, which is good defensiveness. So we're okay. We are losing quite a bit of man manpower right now, or money right now. Uh, because we are reinforcing our army. This is fine. So what I'd like for them to do is to um, get out and have only that one stack there. And then we want to take a good fight there. So I don't know if I want to do it right now. I also would probably want to avoid that, that uh, attrition there. So let's get in there. And they will probably attack me. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Coalition is forming by the looks of it. Serbia joined my coalition. Oh no, anyways. So they ran out. That's fine, because remember, this province is scorched. The scorch also applies to you. So since they occupy it, it's hostile. Technically, this province is hostile to me. So, so we're just going to sit here and let these guys burn a little bit, honestly. We're going to let them take that 2%, 2.2% attrition on that. Look at this. They're losing a lot of manpower right there. And they've slackened. Have they slackened twice? They've only slackened once. Oh, wait, where are they at here? 2%. So they've slackened their recruiting standards twice. This is the last of their manpower. After this, they have nothing. So we sit here and we wait. And we wait and we wait if we need to. But the Mamluks are going to get destroyed in this war. Okay, very good. So this is a nice event. Um, 10 prestige is pretty solid. Um, Unrest. 10% tax from one province. That's fine. Yeah, that's totally fine with me. That extra prestige gives us... As I've said before, uh, morale of armies, but it also gives improved relations. AE impact reduction. So all of these are really good. Institution embracement cost. Speaking of, let's take a look at the institution. So very good. It's almost over 41% in our capital. And uh, as we continue to yoink dev and stuff, it'll actually keep going up. So all good stuff. Let's uh, take a look here and um, see if we can exploit a little bit of money out of our provinces. I like to avoid taking loans if I can. And... Uh, but, but doing this hurts your economy in the short term immediately, but in the long term, it's fine because it frees up dev. So remember each month he's losing a bit more men. So uh, legalism for money and uh, a bunch of prestige. That's really good. Yeah, that's uh, that's totally fine. The legalism is really good. That actually will free up um, even more tech costs. I would really like to get admin tech. I think we're going to go with innovative ideas first. Lockie has entered a coalition. Oh, no. Look, they can't even join a coalition against me anymore. Look at that. Technically, Wallachia can't anymore. They joined literally like a day before they weren't able to anymore. But yeah, like Genoa and all those guys, none of them can join a coalition against me anymore. So we're good. If we call those guys. We don't need them anymore. They got a wall breach, so we got to be mindful of that. But um, these guys are trapped in here. They're like that meme where there's like the girl on the couch with the, with the black men standing behind her. If you're familiar with that meme, that, this is what's going on right now with these guys. Because they're going to die here. They're going to get a couple more siege ticks. But they're also going to... Oh, 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 oh. We just had an event happen. The fate of the Crimean Khanate. So we can make Crimea a march or we can uh, not. Which obviously a march is really good. For 150 mana, I think I'm okay with that. So we just got a vassal up here, which is cool. I don't care about this, advice, or this uh, pretender rebel because... A vassal is a vassal, and it doesn't matter. if Unless they are a... Um, oh, that's funny. They have an, uh, an Ottoman leader. So, yeah. And unless they're a personal union, you can't lose them. So, I'm just going to let them handle that over there. I don't care. So, we are fully reinforced here. Now, we're going to wait till the monthly tick here. And we're going to head over. We're going to attack these guys. Where are they at now? Man, they have 5,000 manpower, and I have 16. Their war exhaustion is going up from all their attrition that they're taking. So I'm actually going to reset and go one more month here. 
You, you never want to get in on the first of the month. The, the monthly tick actually happens upon the first of the month ticking over. So what you want to do is you want to go in on the second. Just be safe because if you get there on the first, they'll get there at the same time that the tick is happening. So they won't actually take the attrition because the battle will start first. Um, legalism is king. Always go with legalism. Look how much... Look how cheap our techs are now. 516, base 600. So you can already see we're starting to stack that up. And that's with the minus or the plus 9% from uh, the Renaissance. So really, really solid stuff. Innovativeness is already up to almost 10. So these guys will be there on the second. We want these guys to get a few days after. So we'll have half of them go in on the fifth and then half of them go in on the eighth. And you can see here, we will destroy them. We're going to reinforce. So even if they get in there, look at that. Look at those losses. We took heavy losses, but they also took heavy losses. We can afford it. They cannot. So now they're heading over here with a 15 stack, and we are going to attack this 15 stack over here. That is also um, a nine stack of Ottomans. I don't think that would be a wipe. Oh, they got out. Really? Well, let's, uh, let's track those boys down. Is that a wipe? That might be a wipe. Yes. Oh, that's really good for us. That's so good for us. So we've lost 35. That's a lot of men we've lost. They've lost 67 almost. They're on medium enthusiasm. They have five war exhaustion already. That's crazy. Remember, we're seven years ahead of time on tech. We can buy down war exhaustion if we need to. It's not an issue for us. It's not an issue, right? So uh, in order to, re you know, not uh, get absolutely destroyed by attrition, we're going to split up our armies. We're going to come over here, regen a little bit, let those 9,000 men fill back in. And uh, the issue is, is he's got taking war score. So we're actually at 17 war or whatever, 15 war score, but he's got um, minus 16 from the uh, war goal and we're not going to be able to get it. So all I wanted in this war was to get into war with him and prevent them from being able to join a coalition. That's it. And then after you piece them out, they have a five-year truce and over five years, they're going to lose 15 uh, aggressive expansion. They wouldn't even be able to join. Even if I piss them out, uh, piece them out right now, they would not ever be able to join a coalition against me. It's really good. Safeguard Anatolia. Okay, so we're going to get those soon as well. Oh, hey. We got mill access through here. Look at that. Sneaky, sneaky. All right. So let's get those guys like up here and over here. Got to be mindful. It's a good thing I was paying attention. Always be paying attention. So those guys are coming over here. They're probably going to siege down this Highlands province. Uh, base manpower. And everybody likes me a little bit more. Or uh, everybody hates me. I gain some money. Well, I think I'd rather everybody liked me. Plus the base man, the base manpower is really good. So we're going from 428 per month up to 441 a month. That's pretty solid. So yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to bait them into a taking a bad fight over here. Scorch a couple of these provinces. Where are you guys going? And they're just leaving. All right, that's fine. All right, so those guys would be here on the 21st and I would be there way before that. 21st, I wanna make sure that these stacks are out first. This is Highlands. So I wanna get there after the 11th, so right now, that's fine. I will stack wipe that one stack and we can scorch that province. If they really wanna come back, they can, but they're gonna to have to pay for it. So now we can just keep an eye on them. They're taking all that attrition. Like, what are they doing? Look at this. 40,000 men they have, and roughly all of them are taking attrition. Meanwhile, we're trying to avoid it, not taking as much, right? Ooh, realistically, I should also have been blockading them this whole time. So that's a bit of a misplay on my end. Get these guys over here. We can fight them over here in Adana. We want to. So yeah, blockade. Always blockade your enemy if you can, because it will help out. I'd see. You don't want to lose... Um, prestige but legalism is the way to do it for sure so here's a nice trick we're gonna be taking tech soon realistically we'll take it like next month so here's a nice little trick you can do uh if we want to take tech but we're doing something that's gonna increase our tech cost what you do is you push this off to the side and you just wait for a moment wait for the monthly tick here so these guys will be there on the second and i can be there before that so i want these guys to head in i want those guys to be getting in there on the second i guess all right, they, uh, they pulled back. That's just fine. May actually be able to head in and stack wipe that six stack, but we'll hold off on it. So since we can now take this, we'll take this tech. So 
if we were to lose some um so basically here's what i'm doing i'm gonna click the legalism one but since we have 100 percent legalism you can click this button to uh lose some corruption we don't have any corruption however there is an event over here a button you can click i can take two corruption for 237 ducats just take it for free basically all it costs is corruption but if you have an event that's gonna make you lose corruption which you can do by clicking this button here we have no more corruption. We just got 200 some ducats for free. And then you click this button and then you get your legalism stacked up a bit more, right? So first idea group, I do think innovative is gonna be the best. Um, it's really good on the Ottomans. Uh, other good options are usually economic. Economic is really solid. It ends with the 20% dev cost, which is a really, really strong modifier. Um, and then admin is also solid as well for uh, extra core creation costs, as well as admin tech costs, scales well into the late game. Uh, other ones that I would recommend, a uh, religious is usually a good one as well. Um, it's not going to be as useful because you have the HRE over here. So if the Ottomans religious is not super good, but religious is up there for one of the best idea groups that you can take for your first one. Um, military idea groups are the other ones I would recommend. Quantity is usually a good first idea group. It's actually probably my most used first idea group. Uh, we are ahead of time on Miltech, so you can see it would actually be okay for us to take it because we would be able to take the first idea group if we were to take a mill group. Thinking ahead though, long-term innovativeness, innovation, innovative ideas is the best one for the long term. So we're going to go with innovative ideas. Um, speaking of, we're already ahead on mill, so I'm going to switch my focus over to a um, admin focus. And Mehmet is only 27, so we have plenty of time to look forward to him. So. Here's the nice thing. We can white piece out the Mamluks if we wanted to. We can also win this war. I'm very confident we can win that war. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to get my men marching over and uh, we are going to get started on that. Oh, that is a three siege general. Goodness gracious. So yeah, we're going to take our three siege general. We're going to head over here. Oh, shoot. I didn't see that army there. Oh, that's a bad bag. Oh, just kidding. That's a fight that we are definitely going to win. Apparently somehow. So those extra shock pips probably that's solid that's real solid all right very good and then again if you want to you can pull out your damage stacks have them head back out and go recoup in friendly territory and then meanwhile these guys will siege them down three siege is really good and you can see here see how good that siege is because we have spy network and as your spy network scales up you get siege ability bonuses from them uh, so we get up to 20%, I believe, if you have 100%. So that's really solid. 20%, that's like, you know, six or seven days off of this each, each tick. So very good. Uh, also, it looks like we're going to be having some issues with rebels. So I'm going to pull these guys back for now. And we're going to have them suppress at least a little bit here. And uh, hopefully we can prevent them from firing. Yeah, it looks like they're going to fire. I am going to... There's enough dev over here. I really don't want to. The war exhaustion is not helping either. Okay, we're ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy my war exhaustion down. And that's going to help out with that unrest. That combined with uh, this army here will uh, reduce our chance of it happening. So these guys are also going to be here to reinforce if they do decide to gang up on us. Which um, looks like they're not. AQ has left our coalition, which is good. National decision. Provincial government. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Also, many of you may have noticed that we can assign a Pasha. Basically, what this does is it makes it your, so your state maintenance is a little bit cheaper at the cost of governing cost. So, an unrest. So, it's okay. Um, Pashas are really nice if you plan on playing very wide. Um, the unrest is really nice as well as state maintenance. But the construction cost is also not as good. So, if you're going to be taking like an economic group, maybe that would make a little bit more sense. So... Just something to keep in mind. I wouldn't assign Pashas unless you really need them. All right. So these guys are reinforced enough that we are going to head down here. And we are going to start um, getting some occupations going down here. You can see here we're up to 11. Sieging down forts is, is the way to do it. And uh, we are probably going to kick the Mamluks' teeth in in this war. That's, uh, that's my goal at least. And the more we occupy, and remember, we're looting. We have our guys split up over here. We have 10 units right here looting this province. So we will gain 1.5 per month from that province. So it's a really great way to sustain yourself while also hurting them while in a war. Also devastates their land, which hurts them, hurts their economy as well. Uh, but that's a whole nother story. And you can see here, we can see whenever they come through here now. So we know 
if they're bringing an army up to try to siege us down. So all good stuff. What's this about? Noble rebels. Great Horde is at war with Muscovy. Very good. Very good. Yes. Oh my gosh, our siege ability. Look at this. This siege has only been going on for 140 days and we're going to win very soon. At least I hope so. 42%. Well, Davi has told me that we sucked and they hate us. Sons of guns. So they are now down to 35,000 men from the 50 they were at with zero manpower and zero or well, two professionalism. Meanwhile, we haven't lost any. I would call that a win. I would definitely call that a win. And so here's a nice little trick you can do as well. So you can see here when I click on, the, click on this province here, this is the fort in Haleb up here, Aleppo. We have four defensiveness, and that is based on my, me alone and my modifiers, and this is my power projection. But if you were to click on uh, this province and transfer it over, where are we at here? This province here, uh, Z is my hockey, and you transfer it to Crimea, who is a march, they have better defensiveness because they're a march. So I recommend giving your forts over to your marches. Even better yet, you don't pay for it anymore. He's paying for it. So really good things. Uh, and basically it just takes longer for him to siege it down. So it's really, really solid. I definitely recommend passing off your forts to a march. We're going to come down here, stack wipe this little army here uh, because my intention is to piece them out now. They're not quite willing to piece out yet. That's okay. So nice thing is, take a look at the fort zone of control. We can march right onto Cairo now. And we will. We're going to march right onto Cairo. And hopefully not get ganked on the way down there. So that is fine. Let's have these guys come down here and have these guys come down here. And basically we want to surround them. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's um actually come over here to see if we can prevent them from getting up there. So they are taking those armies up there. If they want a base race, I'm willing to base race. Because our defensiveness is going to be much better than their defensiveness here. Once they, once they get on to Damascus over here, you can see what their siege ability is. Uh, more legalism? Yes, please. Absolutely. We're hardly, we're actually making money right now. And as soon as we win, we end the siege of Cairo, we're going to get 25 war score plus whatever we would actually get from occupying his capital. And this is a show strength war, a humiliation war. So what that means is we can humiliate him, oh, not, not that. humiliate him to get this, uh, this one right here, which I think I will. Or we could show strength to get mana which is another really tempting one. However, the if you show strength, it doesn't give you this. So I'm not sure because if we're going to pop our golden era, which I don't know if I really am too keen on it. Generally, as a big strong nation, it's good to pop your golden era later. If you're a small weak nation, it's good to pop your golden era early on. Uh, if you don't know, your golden era will give you morale of armies, all power cost, which is the, honestly the big one, goods produced, which is even better later game. That's why I tend to take it later and max absolutism, which helps with... Um, playing wide in the late game. So that's uh, that's sort of my thought process for it, at least. Let's get a general in there so they don't get stack wiped if they do try to attack us over here in Sinai. And all we need to do is win Cairo and we can win the war. But uh, as far as war score goes, I don't think we're going to be able to show strength on him because that's a 100% war score. So you can see here, ooh, they do have good, good uh, spy network on me. It says in Crimea, but it's actually on me because... I, uh, you can't spy, build spy network on a vassal. But yeah, as you can see over here, we have much better siege ability. 24 day siege checks versus like 28, 29. Yep. So uh, we're also about ready to take it. So I would be very surprised if we weren't able to take it. People leaving our coalition. Yep. There we go. We've won the siege of Cairo. 65 war score. You can see here, we will not be able to show strength. That's just going to be too much. What I can do is humiliate them. Have them give me war reps. Uh, he's getting trade power from somebody else, so I cannot take it, but I can yoink dev from his capital, which I will do. Make sure you click to your capital. And then... And any useful alliances. He doesn't have any, which is good. Um, you cannot have him... You cannot take any clay in a humiliation war. But you can take lots of money. Give up his claims on me? Nah, probably not useful. So, what I will do is I will take as much money as he's willing to give... That's a lot of money that he's losing. I'm gaining. And uh, the most important part of all this, we're humiliating him, which is giving us 33 PP and he's losing 33 PP. He's a great power. So that's really a big deal for him, right? So that's good. We gain two prestige, 10 Diplo, seven AE, big whoop. We have a big long, big long truce with him. That's the big one. And uh, right there, 
Look at our PP. 80. 80 PP. That's crazy. That's really, really big. So that's a big PP right there, as you may say. So let's get half, like one of these stacks over there, and then two stacks over to Constantinople. Uh, and that is how you win a war against a nation that you think you're going to lose. Remember, at the beginning of this video, I, uh, I showed you guys, we had half the men in the field that they did. Half. So these guys are going to head up there. These guys are going to head over to here. And we're just going to get those rebels out. Sadly, they're going to get the extra years of separatism. So you can take a look here. Uh, it says there's 9.5, but it's going to go up by 2.5 after he occupies it, I think. Uh, maybe not. On the monthly tick. Ooh. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, cool. So we get an event to pick our next heir, and this is partial for the Ottoman government. Uh, so we get to take a look here. We can go with an 021, 254, or a 563. The 6 Diplo, I'd rather take a couple of those points and put over into uh, MILF, but this is fine because uh, we're going to be working on an admin group. Murad is a fine name for me. And uh, we can also do this one here, which will give us... Idea cost, which is good because we're working on idea cost. Moorish influx. Uh, it's going to cost us a little bit of admin, but uh, it'll pay itself off in no time. So that's good for sure. So these guys will come up here, kill off this stack here. And did they end up getting separatism? They did not. Okay, that's fine. So, yep, we'll just come over here, kill those guys. And then um, I like to take the manpower. Just march on over because this fort over here will reclaim that fort there. And uh, very good. We will stick with our legalism. And uh, as far as money goes, we are losing quite a bit of money. We should probably switch back to that level one advisor. That will save us a few. And then uh, turn our forts off. It hurts our army tradition, but at this point in the game, I'd rather just save the money, to be honest with you. Take a look at this. We have prosperity now in a bunch of these provinces. Speaking of, let's switch this edict off that I had over here. Uh, edict map mode is a nice one as well, right here. No edict, and then let's switch this one over since we're gaining enough to uh, trade power. So you can see here, we're going to be making 11.3, 11.03, and then on the yearly tick, it will go up. Oh, here's another nice event. <laughs> so take a look at here, the worldly ulemma. You can either gain corruption and a couple of other things or lose corruption. And if you lose corruption, you might as well have something to lose. So take the money, lose corruption. And there you go for like tolerance. Who cares? Big whoop, right? That's awesome. So we went from 1103 up to what? 1105, 115. So half a ducat a month, as well as we're not losing money anymore from paying for those uh, edicts, which is really good. Oh, right. That fort's turned off. Oopsies. Yeah, sadly. That's why you keep the fort on. The fort, if a fort is on, the zone of control applies to rebel provinces. So a lot of people don't know about that. So you can turn that fort back off, and there you go. Yeah. Maybe leave it on for a, a month to uh, get that devastation down. If you don't know, a province that borders a fort will lose devastation at a higher rate when it's unoccupied. So take a look over here. Got some devastation. It's fine. There's not much I'm going to do about it because there's not a whole lot of dev over here in the first place. We can increase a couple of trade centers. So level three trade center costs 1,000 ducats, but it gives 10% Okay, so it gives dev cost in uh, the whole, pr it says province, but I think it's the whole state, as well as local trade power plus 10, institution spread. We're going to do it because that's going to give us even more trade and it will scale. So you can see here, we can gain innovativeness for taking this idea. Basically, I'm going to just forget about admin tech until we get to at least here and we get cheaper tech. Uh, so prestige decay is nice because you can see here we're losing 2.25 2.26 and it goes all the way down to 1.39 so having higher prestige is something that is more sustainable right so we're just gonna sit on this and just ride it out matter of fact let's go with an inflation reduction guy and uh i'm gonna see if i can do a little bit of shenanigans here so if you don't know there's an event that you can get called radical reforms if you have an inflation reduction guy and a trade advisor for your diplo slot so we're gonna try to go for that uh there we go perfect so all you do, and I think it's got a mean time to fire of 10 years or something like that. I don't know exactly what it, what it is, but I will show you how that goes. Mainly, I have the money to afford a level two advisor, so we might as well, uh, because it's an extra mana per month, as well as we will be getting um, 
what you might call it, uh, the potential to get Radical Reforms, which is an event that will give you a lot of mana, especially in the places that we need it right now. So we can take Miltech right now. We're not going to get innovativeness for it, so there's no point. There's really no point. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to sit back and wait. I can upgrade this guy. Uh, so here's an example of where it maybe is a good idea to dev. You need at least 10 dev to upgrade a center of trade. We do not have 10 dev here, but we can pay for the local dev cost. Make sure we got our burgers at least loyal enough. And then we can dev this three times to get 10 dev, upgrade that one. And just like that, we went from making 11.5 up to like probably about 14 ducats a month now, right? Where are we at here? Nope, 13.3. So yeah, it's uh, that entrep this level three guy will pay for itself in no time. So that's pretty useful. Uh, we also have this one over here so we could steer a bit more trade. So I'm going to upgrade this one as well once we have 200 because steering more trade into our node is going to be better because less trade for the Egyptians means more trade for the, uh, the Turks. And we want to take as much trade as possible. So again, the reason why I'm not taking this, if you're wondering, because I've explained it before, but I'll explain it again if for those of you who maybe missed it. The reason why we're not taking this idea or this mission is because we want to hold off until we get that dev cost in our trade cap in our capital node. Uh, we want to hold off and use it when we want to dev up colonialism because colonialism is a is an innovation or is a um, what's the word I'm looking for is an institution that we're going to want to dev up. We're not going to be able to just get it. Uh, it's going to take a long, long time to dev it, so or to get it. So we're going to do that. Also, we have some spy network. We might as well get some claims on him. Um, so yeah, we're sitting on that. And then this one over here, we were going to wait until we were ready to attack the Venetians. And uh, that war with the Mamluks kind of left us licking our wounds a bit. So admittedly, it's probably not in our best interest. So maybe it would be a time pretty soon here. Yeah, it would be good for us to attack and then not co-belligerent Venice but still maybe take a few of them. It's going to be expensive, but uh, this war right here would be pretty easy. So I think that might be the way to do it, honestly. Plus we can annex them. We don't need to worry about rebel uh, about getting raided anymore. So good stuff. Uh, maybe it would be in our best interest to curry some favors with him. We, we're not gaining favors because we told him we don't want to join offensive wars, but currying favors doesn't stop that. You can still gain them over time. Hmm. Maybe we do want to join his offensive wars. We'll get favors much faster that way. So let's do that. That's fine. He's doing God's work. No, we want legalism. We're already at max legalism, though. Hmm. Huh. That's yeah, fine. Whatever. So we also need to make sure we are getting as much crown land as possible, as quickly as possible. So we are going to click this button here to seize crown land. As long as it's all staying at least above 30, you are good. And even more important, our monthly autonomy change is not negative anymore. So now you can see our local autonomy is gonna be going down much faster. Oh wait, it does, okay, there you go. 0.25 instead of 0.125. Also, uh, since we're ahead on Diplo still, eh, barely, but we're still ahead on Diplo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch this one over to dev cost. Sadly, I just uh, pissed off the burgers, so we're not gonna be gaining the bonus from that. but. We also have almost have prosperity here. I'm going to wait. We're going to wait until the burgers are loyal again. We want le le legal, uh, loyal burgers and prosperity, and we'll be able to dev up um, that goods produced in this province. So that'll be really good for us. Let us, we'll keep that there for now. And uh, I bet we can probably get it in Constantinople pretty soon here. So there, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. So let us build up our Navy a little bit. Does he have any heavies? Does Venice have any heavies? These are the things you have to take a look at. No. They have 20 galleys, though. 20. So let's go with 30. We have not enough uh, force limit for that, but we're going to do what we can here because we have plenty of money coming in, and I think it will be fine. Uh, so we'll also have a mil tech advantage on them and tactics. Always keep this in mind. If you're going to be declaring a war and you're going to be ahead of somebody, make sure you have... Like, if you have tactics, strongly consider declaring that war. It's it's definitely a good thing. Nice. So, here we go. And uh, we almost have it in the in our capital. What, what is the estimated time to get this in our capital here? It says we will get it in uh, 68. So, that's fine. And Crimea here has uh, some, some cores on Lithuania. 
Hmm. That might be a war that we want to declare sooner or later. These cores, Ruthenian. So he's going to lose them before too long. Maybe we'll be able to declare that. Maybe. We'll see. We will see. So yeah, right now, you can take a look. Our aggressive expansion is ticked down, mostly, for the, for the most part. So now, if we want to attack the uh, Serbians, we easily can. As a matter of fact, we should. Uh, because we can attack them, and the only person that's going to help them is Bosnia. So let's have these guys come over this way. I had my armies turned on this whole time as well. Derp. It's okay. Low crown land. Yes. Terhala gets a mosque. Demi gain loyalty. Or burgers... Production dev. Um, I'd rather not do the production dev. Ulema. Yeah, let's go with the Demi and build a mosque in this province here, which is only 100 ducats, which is something we can afford at the moment. In a couple of months, we can afford it. All right. So we're going to click this mission here because this is going to give us permanent claims on Serbia. You can see here, permanent claims, which is good. That way we can declare on them. We can co-belligerent Bosnia. Well, I need to cancel my mill access through them. I forgot about that. So let's cancel mill access and cancel mill access. We will co-belligerent Bosnia because if you take a look here, if you click on a province of a nation and you click or you hover over that, you can see at the bottom it says total war score cost for all Bosnian provinces. What that means is what it would cost to full annex them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to attack these guys, full annex them, and we're also going to vassalize Bosnia. Though Serbia is also usually a pretty good um, subject. But... Um, we're going to do that because he's got some cores over here on these guys who we can take and then we can use that as a pretext to get to war with Wallachia. So let us do that. Declare war. Co-belligerent. And uh, let's go for like niche or niche, niche, niche and uh, get to war over here. This fort is mothballed actually, which is unfortunate because I don't think I'm going to get there in time. I will not, sadly. But uh, that's okay. So if you don't know, you can get onto a mothballed fort before it gets... Um, a tick of attrition, or a tick of, uh, whatchamacallit, the people, the reinforcements. So these guys are low morale, so I'm just going to attack them here on the minus pro in the province there in Kosovo. And uh, we stack wipe them. These guys are coming over here. And uh, we're going to stack wipe you as well. And we're just going to, you know, as Levig would call it, a festival of stack wipes. So those guys will be out on the 12th. We will be there after that. 21st, 16th, 14th. Okay, they're going to get on to Kosovo. So as soon as they lock in on Kosovo, then we're going to head up that way. And uh, the rest is going to be history. You're just going to sit here and occupy them. They have 4K. They have no, they have one army. So that is going to do it. We're going to finish this war up. Shoot. Get a general on there. And let's get you guys down there. Sadly, I attacked them in the mountains. That's unfortunate. But yes, I hope you guys learned a little bit today. That was a really solid war against the Mamluks. I'm really proud of that. Innovativeness gain is really good. That means for the rest of the game, anything that's going to give us innovativeness is going to give us more than it would otherwise. So that is really good. And then uh, we'll also get core creation costs before the end of the war, hopefully. And we'll be able to um, be able to core this up for, what is that, 20% cheaper? 20% cheaper. Pretty good. Yes, hope you guys learned something today. If you did, leave a comment down below and let me know what you learned. And uh, leave a like if you did enjoy the episode. I really do appreciate any and all feedback, and uh, I read all the comments, so all of it is really much really appreciated by me. If you guys want to join the Discord, subreddit, Twitter, anything like that, it's all linked in the description below the video. And uh, if you want to support me, I have a Patreon linked below each and every one of my videos. It's never it's, it's never expected, but it is always very much appreciated. Patreon support is really what allows me to do what I do. But that's all I got for you for today. This is Chewy Shoot, and I will catch you guys later.